Hello and welcome back. This is episode number two in a multi-part series in which we'll be adding features to the Dimecast.net website. In this episode, we'll actually go about creating the code in which to display some data on our website. The data we want to actually display is this right here. We want to create a new section where called cast levels and basically list out all the levels in which episodes are attached to. In a future episode, we'll actually click implement the logic that does the routing as well as the displaying of the episodes once you click this link. We've already created the data access. We did that in a previous episode. So let's go ahead and create our service methods and start working on hooking this up to the UI. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create a, a method that will return me back my cast episode level item. This was generated in the previous episode. And I'm going to go ahead and return null for now. And I'm going to bounce over to unit test real quick and do this so that we can actually create tests at the same time. So let's create my levels, some new level. Now I'm going to go ahead and introduce a variable here. And I'm going to assert that usage is not null for now. Later, if I was, I would come back and I'd add some more tests to this. Let's go do this. So I've got this. I know this will test will fail. I don't need to demonstrate that. So actually, let's wire this bad boy up real quick. Well, the first thing I need to do is I actually need to create an instance of my, my repository. So I'm going to do this via my dependency injection. So I'm going to grab an instance of my episode repository. I'm going to create the data. Get episodes by level. And because we have a business requirement that I want to sort those based on usage, I'm actually going to sort that before I send it back. So I'm going to do a return levels. And I'm going to use some Lambda expressions here. Order by descending. Usage count. I'll do a two list. So I've gone ahead and I've created my service method real quick. Let's go ahead and just test it to make sure that it actually reaches into my data repository and retrieves data from, from it. and did return two pieces of data. And if I wanted to make this test complete, I would actually probably want to iterate through to make sure that the sorting actually worked and all that good stuff. But for demonstration purposes, we don't need to worry about that right now. So now that we have our service level class created, let's go ahead and start wiring up the UI. Well, because I already have a feature that's similar, this cast tag, I can actually steal some code. So let's go ahead and do that first real quick. I have a user control that I want to steal. And the one I'm going to steal right now is called cast tag.listing. So let's just do some copy and paste refactoring here. We need to change this to a new object that we're about to create. And this object is very similar to the one that's implemented by the tag. So let's go ahead and copy and paste that and do some renaming as well. I'm going to call this items. So I've gone ahead and created another model here. This is a model that's going to be represented on my, my UI side. And right now it only holds this list of data. But in the future, I'm going to add it so it actually holds some more data. So I, I find this is the best, best and easiest way to go about doing this. So I'm going to go back to my ASCX file real quick and change this so that my view data is the correct thing. And then I'm actually going to make some changes to what is actually stored. 
So right now we're actually calling into the levels service. And I'm going to call into the get level items usage method. So I've now created at my user control a way to populate itself. And then I need to go back over to my UI code, my actual user controls HTML, and make some changes so that we have the appropriate data. And here, basically what I'm doing is I'm setting up the, the link display. And we're going to use the level name instead of the ID here. And I just want to be able to show how to do some custom routing in the MVC framework. So I've gone ahead and I've created my, my, my user controller, my ASCX file. Now I need to actually go over to my site master file and actually add this control to the app. Because I want this to be rendered right below the cast tags, I'm going to go find the cast tag, which happened to be right here. And I'm going to copy, paste, do a little renaming. Called levels listing. And there you go. So I've now actually added the user control to my UI. And if I change this to debug mode and make a real quick change, actually I don't need to. If I change that to debug mode, hit F5. We'll let the site load and see if it actually works. Something's not like it. Aha, there you go. And sure enough, it does. So now we've added this new feature to our website. I can now have a new cast levels section of the site. And if I click on this link, it goes nowhere yet because I haven't implemented that code yet. But we'll do that in future episodes. So what do we cover today? Well, we've created a, a service method that will actually reach into our database, which is our episode repository, which we worked on in the first episode. We've created a test just to verify that that does actually return back what we expect. We've modified an existing ASCX file, or taken an existing one and modified it to meet our new needs. And basically all this does is iterate over and basically dump some HTML to the screen. And then we've added it to our site master to give us a new feature. In the next episode, we'll talk about how to create the routing as well as the, the screen that will display all the episodes. And then we'll finish up by doing some refactoring because as you can tell, the level listing here that I just created is very similar to the tag listing, and I want those things to implement common code so it saves me some overhead later, later on. So I hope you learned something today. Till next time.